Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to what we hope is an eye-opening presentation on the importance of accurate estimating for construction project control. My name is Amira, and I'm here today to make sure everything runs smoothly. Just a quick tip before we get started regarding some of your display options today. If you navigate to the top right hand of your screen, you will notice a little view menu item. If you click on that, you will be presented with a couple of display options. You can play around with those to see which one works best for you, but we recommend that you use the side-by-side -side gallery view for today's session. We also invite you to make use of the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Due to time constraints, we won't be able to answer any questions live. However, a consultant in your region will get back to you soon after the event. You will also have a chance to fill in a form at the end of this presentation, if you wish for someone to contact you directly. Lastly, the recording of today's session will be shared by an email, so please look out for that in your inbox. Today we've got Graham Braybrook presenting what is project control without an accurate estimate. Graham is our Candy Regional Manager for the UK and Ireland region. Thank you everyone and over to you Graham. Thank you very much Amira and um, good day to everyone from uh, around the globe. Um, and thank you very much for taking the time out today to, to um, um, yeah, view what we, what we have to offer and what we have been offering for uh, many, many years um, uh, in the past. And uh, what I'm going to do for this, for this presentation and what I'm going to try and look at is try and keep um, a very brief PowerPoint presentation. Um, I don't want to bore anybody to death. Um, and then we're going to go directly onto a live candy demonstration um, with the live software itself. So firstly, starting off, um, RIB CCS introduction, what we do, why we do it, um, who we do it for, and then, as mentioned, a live candy demo. So just to give you some background on us as a company, RIB CCS, we have been around for over 40 years. We actually celebrated our 40th birthday um, this year around the globe, found in over 80 countries, um, thousands of users using different applications, using our different applications. And um, fit for purpose software, that is, what, that is what we do. We only design and develop, um, sell and implement software specific to the construction industry. We don't go into manufacturing at all um, or any other aspect of, uh, or any other industries that is specific to uh, the construction industry. We form part of Schneider Electric, so a global company. Um, and that, what, what that does is that actually gives us a fantastic base for research and development. So when we look at developing our software, uh, we, of course, have in-house development. We also have uh, SMEs, so subject matter experts. Um, and anyone you speak to within our, within our company has got some other background within the construction industry. So when we say it's intelligently designed by contractors for contractors, um, as mentioned, um, I have got um, a, a, couple, a few years within the construction industry. Um, I'm a quantity surveyor by trade, um, and a lot of our a lot of our uh, software is developed for each one of these personas within our industry. So, as an estimator, I need to estimate. As a quantity surveyor, I need to be able to be measuring my quantities on a monthly basis, managing my subcontractors, um, and also doing my cost value reconciliations at the end of the month. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves on is our specialist support, 24-7 um, support. Um, and really, we understand that the construction industry, as difficult as it is, um, using a software which has an issue, um, something you might not be able to do, um, or just because of a lack of knowledge uh, on the actual software, uh, we're always there to assist you. And that's something that we pride ourselves on. And that is something that our clients um, would also very much agree that, that, that uh, we are a leader when it comes to support. Research and development, um, how we've developed the software over the 40 years that we've been around uh, is very much listening to our clients. So whether it's a regional uh, regional requirement, if it's specific to the construction industry, of course, the, 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 um, the office in that area will do their due diligence on whether it will uh, be beneficial for everyone in that area. Because Candy as a software, what you see and what you use in Australia, what you see and what you use in India, in South Africa, in the UK and Ireland, is all the same platform. The only difference is your information that's on there. Um, so that's how we've developed the software over uh, 40 plus years is listening to the clients themselves. 
So just to give you an indication of where we are uh, around the globe, um, I've highlighted the UK and Ireland. Um, that's where I currently reside. Um, but you'll see all the RIB CCS logos there. Those are all our offices um, globally. So what we do, namely looking at specifically our applications and our services, and it's all specific to being able to fulfill this total process workflow. So from your estimating stage all the way to final account, our software um, fills the void when it comes to the commercial process and commercial control within any project. Just to give you an idea of our applications, we namely have Candy, which is our estimation project uh, management uh, software, uh, really looking at the entire control on site. Uh, BuildSmart, which is our enterprise management system uh, accounting package, um, fully integrated into Candy itself. Um, and that really is giving a, a huge seamless integration between the two software. Namely, if I am a quantity surveyor and I need to do a cost value reconciliation, I need to understand what my costs are at any given time. Um, and lastly, Connect is really taking that information that, we, that we've estimated in Candy, that we've valued over the month, and really just being able to uh, view it in different reporting structures, um, uh, being able to create our own business intelligence uh, reports, um, all of this available on the Connect, the Connect side of things. A few of our other services that we have available, uh, namely training, um, consulting, uh, our user groups, and obviously now we're doing a user seminar. We do offer free monthly webinars, uh, business intelligence when it comes to actually assisting you in writing different reports, um, and obviously our support, which as mentioned earlier, is something that we really, really proud ourselves on. So just looking at some of the value adds that we that we identify as well as some of our clients that identify. And this is this is really leading into why um, we develop software, why, why we have our software. So firstly, I'm not, I'm not going to go into every single one, um, but a lot of those there, I'm sure that you find would be very, very beneficial to you. For instance, increased accuracy, um, saving time. We know how um, constrained we are in time, especially in the construction industry, and to be able to save time with uh, software that is able to assist us in saving time to be able to spend with our families, to be able to do other things which are, are, are might be more important in our day, um, of course, very beneficial. When we look at Candy, being able to produce a powerful tender, resource analysis, planning, forecasting, and of course, our cost value uh, and allowable report, uh, uh, cost value reconciliation, um, I will take you through, of course, a little bit more of details of that. Um, uh, the last on the top top right there is really looking at uh, departmental silos and eliminating those. One of the biggest issues we have in the construction industry are the silos uh, that, that we find ourselves in. And it's not talking about consultants versus subcontractors versus contractors. It's really even the silos within our own internal organization. Uh, between information share and transparency between an estimator and another estimator, or the transparency of how the estimator has priced the job for the quantity surveyor to actually manage the project going forward. Um, eliminating paper usage. Of course, that's the whole push when it comes to digitalization of the construction industry is to stay away from all those legacy processes that we had of you know, hundreds and hundreds of different revisions of drawings on A3 pieces of, uh, you know, pieces of paper um, and the larger formats, of course, and, you know, all those documentation and, and that whole lead for us to be able to, let's say, have a more sustainable uh, industry, of course, starts with us itself. Um, the dynamic integration with BuildSmart, obviously, as soon as we have estimated on Candy, being able to have the, um, let's say, the first defense of being able to procure as to what we've allowed in that project is obviously the first defense of, let's say, cost control and being able to maintain our profits that we uh, that we have uh, that we have allocated on the actual project itself. And then versatile. So Candy, very versatile, whether you're a small contractor, a medium or large. Um, I will show you a little bit further down in the slides um, of who some of our subcontractors are, and I'm sure they will resonate for the different areas that you're in. So why do we do this? What are the challenges and the outcomes? And obviously, you, everyone 
on this uh, on the on the seminar today understands what the challenges are and you know to be honest i'm not even going to go into many of them but you know the the social political um you know even the, the time constraints that we have all of these are huge challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis and they arise at all different stages whether they're pretender whether they're within the construction phase or even even post-tender um even close to handover um, and final account, all these um, have and are a challenge for us uh, in some other way. So a couple of the generic aspects that we're looking at, um, we're not knowing where we are in the project when it comes to uh, specifically the planning, when it comes to the commercial side of things, our costs are delayed, um, there's no real-time information for us. As mentioned, was our departmental silos that we've got that we always face, um, and that transparency and that and the ability to share information is only power for us to be able to do our job properly. Um, too many systems. Many times we go to uh, go for a, a let's say a, a fact finding to some of our newer clients or some of the clients that are looking to move on to a different, and they are using different software to do different things for all types of uh, all types of scenarios. Um, so really having a look at a, at a more integrated system, um, of course, is very beneficial. Generic financial systems which don't really look at um, construction and you know construction accounting very different to to normal accounting and the normal accounting standards or, or practices and of course the last one is one of our biggest competitors is excel and now we all know the risk when it comes to using excel uh, and these are just i'm sure that you found them um, you know popping up on a daily basis on the monthly basis when you're doing a new tender or whenever you are actually doing um, your monthly progress on on site um, so lack of control and security, it's vulnerable to fraud, um, human errors, of course, one of the biggest issues that we face, um, difficult to actually test or troubleshoot anything that you've done in, in the system uh, in Excel, and data integrity, and obviously it's difficult to consolidate all the different projects or different information that you've got on Excel itself. So all these small challenges that we have, um, if you have a look at a small discrepancy on one project, and let's say, for instance, you've allowed a, a certain amount of profit of 20%, and I'm, I'm being generous on that because a lot of parts of the world, that profit margins are not reached. But if you are allowing 20% profit or margin on a, on, on a project, and let's say, for instance, you lose 2% and you're not able to actually identify where that 2% is. So you're only making 18%. If that happens on one project, not a big deal. If that happens on multiple projects in the year, okay, that's something to look at. But if it happens over multiple years, then you're now looking at a snowball effect where it's actually needing, needed to be addressed because the amount that you've actually lost out, very, very important. So who do we look after? Who are our general personas? And it's really everyone in the construction industry, whether you're an executive that needs to actually sign off a um, an, an estimate, whether you are an IT leader who's actually looking at uh, the, the let's say the latest technology, um, a business owner who wants to sign off and make sure that his his projects are making uh, profit, specialized subcontractors, quantity surveyors, estimators, um, and of course all the way down and uh, across to the procurement manager side of things. So this is just a couple of our key clients in the different areas and different parts of the world, uh, and I'm not going uh, uh, um, to take too much time on this. But for those areas, obviously, we have um, UK and Ireland, uh, Europe, and now we have South Africa. We have the rest of Africa, Armenia, Middle East, North Africa clients, some of our Indian clients, Australia. Right. And obviously, Amira did mention that this will be recorded. So if you needed to uh, have any references, you're more than welcome to give us a call. So going on directly onto Candy's uh, features and functionality, what you see over there is part and parcel when we look at Candy itself. So when you rent Candy, it's a rental module. These are all the specific features that you get part and parcel of that rental. So our QTO, which is a 2D, a 2D uh, takeoff uh, system, and how this sets it very different to a lot of other 2D and a lot of other quantity takeoff systems is this is directly linked to our bill of quantities. So there's no medium that we have to go through to be able to transfer the quantities from the QTO to the VOQ. It is all there and it is linked accordingly. 
estimating. Uh, that is obviously the main reason why we're here today. So really look at, looking at how we estimate on candy, um, looking at free uh, format, uh, first principle pricing, subcontract adjudication, um, a list of reporting, um, and a lot of other aspects and features that I will go through and, and, and try and get through for, during the course, of, um, the course of today. Planning, very much a precedence networking, looking at critical path analysis, and of course, this does anything else than you than the other uh, than a lot of other software that you get in the mar in, in the market. Um, being able to create long lead schedules, time location charts, um, and what is very very different as well from this is as soon as we have that plan and as soon as we have a resource based analytical estimate, we can actually link the two together to give you a lot of information. And that's that forecasting side of things. So being able to link, and it's a dynamic link. So if anything changes on my estimate or if anything changes on my plan, that information is automatically updated onto our forecasts um, accordingly. So when we were looking at cost loaded programs, we were whether we're looking at resource based uh, um, forecasts, all of this available because we've linked our money and our time together. Our cash flow, very much a, a pretender cash flow when we when we look at everything else that really affects our cash flow. So our net present values, our interest rates, when we pay our clients, when our clients are going to pay us, those payment terms, um, our prepayments, uh, when we pay our subcontractors, etc. Um, and that all giving us a very nice little um, cash flow, bank balance, weekly bank balance, as well as a, 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 a monthly bank balance. Then we look at value, valuations, and this is really where the quantity surveyors come in, um, where we are measuring our work. We need to be paid for the work that we've done. Uh, so we need to be able to give a, a, a claim quantity to our clients. We also need to measure what we've done actually. Obviously, our claimed um, being a little bit more because we it's all about cash flow um, and our valuations when we try and 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 um, uh, uh, let's say value our work to date. Um, variation orders, of course, the only thing that is ever present in any contract is variation orders. Being able to manage those variation orders um, and being able to really identify financially what we are going to be taking uh, and what profit we're going to be taking with those variation orders. What is the risk that we still need to take if there are variation orders that we need to do? And lastly, our cost and allowables. And this really is the, the business end of, of Candy. So yes, we, we are here at day X, let's say after month one, but what is the ability and, and what do we have and what, do we, what is the project going to look like at the end of the total contract? So we have the ability on uh, Candy to be able to rework the quantities itself. So um, also the cost rates. So if our resources, and let's say, for instance, this project is three years long, um, of course, there are going to be many instances where, uh, and let's say, all the costs on that project are going to be escalated. In, in, our current, in our current climate, everything is going to be escalated. So if these costs are increasing, what is it going to have, what effect is that going to have on our total cost at the end of, uh, the, end of the, uh, the project? And being able to handle these types of scenarios, even if our production, um, our uh, the ability to change and and amend our worksheets uh, for the the remaining um, aspect of a project, of course, is very important. And lastly, the ability to to actually manage and report on that. So, a, a earned value management uh, scenario and earned value management reporting, of course, also available on the system itself. And that's really where and what we're looking at now is the earned value graph. Um, but this all boils down to having a proper estimate um, at estimate stage, at a at tender stage. Without that, obviously, the fundamentals of project management is we need something to be able to, 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 um, to uh, uh, let's say, report against. And that, that, that original base forecast or original baseline is what we're doing. And that all stems from a good estimate and a, uh, a plan or a, or a program of, of, of time. So that's it from me on the PowerPoint presentation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go directly into the live software. So excuse the, um, the change. There we go. So what you see currently on your screen is Candy itself. Um, it's not a very big application at all. Um, and the, the database has been written the same uh, for the last 40 years. And the power of that is that you have the ability to 
actually estimate and tender huge projects on, on Candy itself. Hundreds of bill items, uh, uh, hundreds of bill pages and thousands of bill items themselves. And you'll note as well, just at the bottom left there, this is where my data is being stored. So whether you are storing your data in a server or whether you are uh, storing your data on your actual PC, you have the ability to change and um, update on how you want to store this information. Of course, we have Candy Cloud as well, um, which is web-based, uh, really a, a virtual desktop. Um, and you obviously save all your information onto that desktop, uh, onto that remote desktop itself. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to double click and open up Candy to view this RIB CCS prospect demonstration job. So if I double click and open up, um, as you see, um, what I was referring to earlier on with all the different functionalities and features, for instance, my estimating, my planning, link and forecast, cash flow, valuation, subcontract manager, and the cost and allowables. Uh, materials and drawings, uh, I'm not going to go into today, but we all come back to this and it all starts on the estimating side of things. All right. If we have a look further to the right on the top right of our screen, one of the things is our version number. And I mentioned earlier on that we're always developing, we are always updating our software. Um, and this is a, a, very basic, a very basic principle of updating our software on a regular basis. And there's obviously many pros to that. Uh, the main pros, of course, being any new features that we've released, released would be available for you to download um, and update your software. Also very important to our users, as mentioning, was our support. So whether it's actually going to our help center, um, or using our offices worldwide, our, our contact details are always available for you to, to, to go and look up if the need arises and if you're in a bit of a pickle or you have a bit of a, 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 an emergency. So opening up a bill of quantities, I'm going to open it up and that's what it looks like. Very straightforward and, and simple. And there are very, very minimal similarities when you look at the BOQ document uh, on Candy and the structure to possibly Excel is that it consists of rows, it consists of columns, and it consists of cells, right? But the power behind Candy and how it be actually became so well known is what we refer to as our worksheets. So the first principles of, of, of pricing um, is, is how Candy really works and, and it's the, the essence of it um, of, of the power of, of the system. So just a couple of other aspects on here. Um, you would obviously note as well that we've got section heading levels, and this is just really a hierarchy structure for us to basically maintain and organize our work um, to, these, to these levels. Um, candy, relevant to Candy and, and very prevalent is the nine levels of Candy. So one being the most senior, nine being the most junior, and everything junior summarizes into the most senior level. So you'll see over here, I've got a concrete formwork and reinforcing, and uh, that's down to a level four. But as soon as I collapse, you'll see it all goes into or summarized and summates into my level threes. Opening up the system and opening up these, very simple and straightforward. So this is our main, our main documentation, is the BOQ. And creating these BOQs is very straightforward and very simple. So I'm going to go to a new job and a new tender, and I'm going to double click and open this up. And I want to open up a BOQ. And the first thing that it asks me is, do I have any previously priced job? Do I have a template? Do I have a master, a master job that I want to use? And this can be any previously priced project that you have. So whether you, you are, you, you're a specialized subcontractor and you only price electrical uh, um, uh, um, items, or whether you are a, um, uh, let's say, infrastructure and you do a lot of drainage uh, and, and, and groundworks, um, you'll have like-for-like like items and like jobs all over. And those you can use to use and price and, and, and actually create your, your, your bill of quantities. So I'm going to go and change my master and I'm going to select the previous job. And the one that I showed you earlier on was our uh, client demos. And there we go. It's That was my demonstration job and I'm going to select it, right? Now, as soon as I open it up, there you see it's a blank bill of quantities. And if I am actually going to start, sorry, it's not yet, but when it opens up, there we go. So if I want to start actually typing out an item and creating these items uh, with the units and the bill quantity, I can do so. Of course, if you have an Excel file, very simple to, to incorporate that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select and delete. If I have an Excel file, I can very simply go and find and Google it or, or, or look for it on my on my. Um, 
on my specific uh, uh, job. So there's my candy, and I'm just going to go to tunes. Sorry, just a second. And here. And I'm going to open this up. Right, so just give me a second, my apologies. Just opening, waiting for Excel to open up. Right, and there we go. So very basic bill of quantities on Excel. And it's as simple as right click and copy. And I'm going straight back to my demonstration. And I'm going to right click and paste. Now, obviously, when I do this, because Excel doesn't have any intelligent information behind it, it's, of course, uh, the process that we need to go through is identifying really what we have from, from Excel to Candy. So firstly, that is my, um, it's a, and it's a matter of dragging and dropping. So I want to allocate that to this column over here. I know that that is my bill item, and I drag and drop. That is my description, I drag and drop, and my unit, and of course, my bill quantity. I'm happy with that. I press continue. And there we go. We have a bit of an import status to give you any, if there were any lines rejected, um, just an import status for you to check and carry on. So I'm happy with that import. If I don't want that first item, I just go control delete and I delete it away. Okay. Now, a couple of other aspects. If I had a master job or if I did have a previously priced project, I can use that to create this bill of quantities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my master. And as you can see, this is in read-only format. So I cannot make any changes when it's in a master format or when it's currently uh, in master uh, mode. So as you can see, as soon as I try and type, it will say this input is locked on this document. But I want to use certain aspects or certain heading levels to create this new project. And let's say firstly starting, I know that there are certain items in my new bill of quantities that I want and uh, part of the Earthworks trade or part of the Earthworks heading. So all I do is I select, and as I drag and drop it on, you'll see it will then bring all the items accordingly to that Earthworks item. If I wanted some concrete, it's a simple process of actually selecting and dragging and drop it on. And that's how easy it is to create and uh, create BOQs or new tenders on, 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 on Candy itself. Um, to continue the uh, demo, I'm going to go back to the RRB demonstration job, and I'm going to start off with the pricing with a price uh, with pricing this project. Now, now one of the things that Candy became so well known for was obviously our worksheets. So if I double click and open up, this is what we refer to as a bill item worksheet. And on these worksheets is where we create and use our our resources. Um, to price. Our productivities are all allocated onto these worksheets. So from the resource list, what does it look like? Well, there we go. That is a resource list. And um, as you can see, I've got my hierarchy of levels accordingly as to what I've wanted to define. And I know that I want for that first item clearance strip site, I need a labor item. So part of my labor operatives I can see that I need some uh, that item of uh, that item over there is what I want to use at 18 per hour. And all I do, it's a matter of selecting the resource and dragging and drop it onto the worksheet. Right. I also know that I want like some some plant, and I go to my plant category, my excavation, and my JD4 10 digger loader that you see over there also highlighted. Now, if you can see on the screen, we have two different uh, 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 two resources with similar description, but they're also an attribute which is um, which is showing you a different color to that one over there. Now, what that is defining is that's defining a complex resource. Now, we have two major types of resources on Candy. We have simple resources, which is uh, anything you can buy or hire, a liter of diesel, a liter of petrol, an hour of, of labor, a pocket of cement, um, anything that you can buy, buy or hire that you need to be able to price this project with. But then we've also got what we refer to as complex resources. Now, complex resources are really just a combination of simple resources or further complexes. So, and as you can see, that has been identified with a number. Now, you have nine levels deep of complex resources which you can which you can create. Obviously, it's these these the 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 coding structure, your complex resource categories 
the definition of them is entirely up to you. All of this information that you see over here is defined by you when you start off by using Candy. But if I want to understand how I got to the JD4 Tindiger loader with the operator and that rate per day, all I do is I double click and it actually opens up a complex worksheet. This is then defining all the specific specifications for that, for that piece of plant. It's giving me the indication of um, firstly, what is being used if there's a working time, a standing time, and there's I have got an, uh, uh, an hourly rate for my driver as well as my diesel incorporated on there. So that is how I got to the rate of 750.18 per day. Now that item as well, I would like to use on my worksheet. And all I do is I drag and drop. Now, what we designed and how these worksheets were designed right in, let's say the beginning and, and uh, the beginning, not beginning of time. I know it's an old system, it's not that old, um, but the beginning of the actual development of, of, of Candy is how we write it down on a piece of paper is how we are actually going to be pricing on these worksheets. So like Excel is very specific and very rigid when it comes to adding formulas and letters of the alphabet to a formula, um, this is not so much. And this is what I was referring to earlier on was the transparency that you're able to get from, from using a system like this. So I know that the way I'm going to price, for instance, if I'm the estimator of this job, job, well, I need three men to complete it. And as you can see, as soon as I write that three men and I press enter, you'll see it's the 18 times the three to give me that 54. Okay. It's as simple as adding a little bit more information for the other estimators firstly to identify what I've priced and how I've priced. My management, if they're actually looking at um, the um, looking at, uh, let's say, auditing this, this the, the, the estimate, and even if it goes and I've won the tender and it goes to the project team and the quantity surveyors on site, they are able then to view on how we've priced it and what we've priced. So we, we, we know what our productivity is, we know what our liable is, because it's all written um, on the worksheets and, uh, and it's identified for us to, um, uh, to know. My JD14 digger loader. Well, it is per day, and as you can see, that is per hour, and what I need to do is, firstly, I need to provide an, a, 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 a conversion from hours into, da into, into a, a daily rate, so what I'll do is, um, that's per hour, I need, a, and they work for times nine hours per day, and as you can see, as soon as I jump off, that will then allocate that full information to that worksheet, and I can write it like this as well, but that information over there doesn't really give much leeway or heading or, or information to the other people within the organization. So that is why these format, these free, free format, uh, free format makeup sheets are so important because we are giving a little bit of uh, parity as to how we've priced these. Okay. Now productivity, because we've, we've converted it into a daily rate, we now need to go and allocate a productivity. So you have a host of uh, different features on candy itself and within these worksheets and i'm going to now allocate a productivity and i know because i'm the estimator for this job that they can get approximately 700 square meters per day so all i'll do is i'll go divided by 700 square meters per day and as soon as i press enter you'll see that that now has allocated that productivity to both these resources and that is what we refer to as an applied factor i'm happy with this price all i do is i store the worksheet and there the price is, and it's a, uh, it's priced as I have priced it. Now, if nothing is set in stone, so if I ever need to go back and find out what that price was um, or how I got to it, all I do is I double click and it opens up my worksheet again. And if I got it slightly wrong, I can say, well, I can go and adjust it for this tender and say it's 650, store the worksheet, and that then updates it. You've got a host of different features when it comes to increasing your productive your your specific productivity and your ability to price foster and one of those things is using masters now as i mentioned before it can be any previously priced project that i want to use okay but i can also replicate the uh, specific pricing that i've got over here so but i know that my my item excavate in bulk class a material i need to go and create a a master or allocate a master for this. And I'm going to select uh, another project that I've been working on. And that's my tender 2022. And I'm going to select that. Now I know in this project, I have got items which are similar or maybe even the same to excavating in bulk class A material. So what I want to do is as simple as saying, I want to allocate a code to price this item. So all I do is I say, right click, 
allocate my price codes. And there you'll see at the top, I've got the ability to swap between the current project and my master job. So I'm going to scroll down to my Earthworks trade. And I know I've got an item here, um, class A material, there it is. And all I do is I select it and I green tick and it will allocate that item and it priced it accordingly. Now, if I go and open up and look at how it was priced, there we go. All the information that I have priced and that I've brought through is available for me to see. And because it's not exactly the same project, I can then go and make the changes that I want. So the ground might be a little bit harder. So the productivity that I originally uh, envisaged isn't going to be enough. So they can only do about 200 cubic meters per day. All right. And as soon as I make that change and I store the worksheet, you'll see that that then has updated that price accordingly. That has got no effect on my current price uh, for my master, because that is a read only. If I do want to go and update the master, I can very much swap the two around and I can import the resource or the updated resource rates onto that, onto that, um, that current, uh, the current project or the current document. Right. Um, a couple of other things when we have a look at um, these documents. Firstly, they are fully customizable. So if I wanted to change any of what I see currently on the screen to something else, I have the ability to go and do that. And it's entirely up to you on how you want to structure these documents or how you want to. Now, if you have a look on the left hand side, the left hand side is a whole list of columns that I can add to my current view or my current uh, document. So if I wanted to add a remarks column, it's as simple as selecting that remark and dragging and dropping it onto my current document. Press OK. And there we go. There it is. And if I've got a remark to add to this, I can go and add whatever the remark is that I want to add. If I want to remove it again, the information is always there. It's stored in the database. I can then just go and double click on it, press OK, and it disappears. So the information is always there and it is, is always available. And that is very much the, the basis of pricing on Candy with the, the use of these of the worksheets and the, and the resources. Um, and there's a host of other aspects as well that we're going to have a look at. So what happens if a lot of my work and, and a lot of contractors now do do a lot of subcontracting? What happens if we do have a subcontractor that we need to that we need to um, allocate to our bill items? So what I've done is I've left a couple of items unpriced. And for this tender, I'm looking at specifically my metalwork um, trade that is going to be done by a specialized subcontractor. And what I want to do is I want to go and create this on my subcontract adjudicator. Now I've created the package. As soon as I open it up, you'll see that the BOQ items are already imported. I, I went through this process before, but now we can go ahead and actually price these items. So subcontractor one gives us a whole list of prices and excuse the, um, the, the prices that I'm giving just for, um, for, for time's sake. Um, I'm just going to give a whole list of different prices um, just to maintain the speed. And if I go to the right, subcontractor three, um, I can, of course, go through via an Excel format. So if the subcontractors are not using Candy, you can still go through the format and allocate and create the, um, the Excel file for them. So I'm going to go and say, okay, tools, I'm going to export this to a blank bill, locked Excel file. And as soon as I select, do I have any other options? No, I'm going to green tick. And what that will do is that will then write it into the background and sorry, it's on a different screen. I'm going to move it across and there we go. So that is what an exported file looks like from the adjudicator. They can then come in and give their, their prices um, accordingly. And I'm just going to take it all the way down. But you can then via an email, save it back onto, uh, they can then send it back to you and you can then go and save it onto your um, onto your computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and do this onto my um, onto my desktop. Okay, and I'm going to save that as subcontract subcontractor three. Save, and I'm going to close that. And back on Candy itself, I want to now go and import the rates from that Excel file. So go and find it. Yes, go and look for it. Go and look, browse on your, your windows. There's my subcontractor three. I'm going to press open and start the import. Okay. What also is uh, uh, good to note is that 
the subcontractors cannot make any adjustments to that. So really maintaining the integrity of the descriptions that you've allocated. They can allocate new items. So if they have a PNG item, which is not part of it, they can allocate those um, and you can import that back as an unlinked item. Um, on this, uh, on the on the subcontract adjudicator. Uh, last one is a uh, just want to show you a couple of other tools on the subcontract adjudication. Is I'm actually going to go and copy the rates by a certain criteria. So let's say, for instance, I did not have uh, one of my subcontractors, my preferred subcontractor um, a price. Uh, what I'm going to do, just in interim sake, uh, while I wait for it, is I'm going to create a price via an average. So I'm going to select my average rate. I'm going to update all the rates and I'm going to press OK. Yes, would, what do I want to use or which subcontractors do I want to use for, the, uh, for this average? Well, I'm going to use all of them, so I'm going to leave it blank and I'm going to press green tick. And what that will then do is that will incorporate and update those, those rates. So I've got an average for that and I'm happy to use this average rate. But firstly, I want to go and compare my quotes. So having a look at uh, a comparison, very much a monetary based comparison. Uh, looking at our subcontractors one, two, and three. Now, if there were any items that were not priced, of course, we will then go and compare apples with apples and pairs to pairs. We will incorporate the lowest price as well as the maximum price and do a comparison with those as well for that item that has not been priced. Okay. Now, that is very basic comparison. From Mr. Average, I'm going to say these are the rates that I want to use at 295. I'm happy with it. As you can see, there's an item there that's unpriced, and that's what we have done in that comparison that you saw earlier on. So when I go and compare, that is what we've done is that item that has not been priced, we've included the other items or the other rates from the other subcontractors, maximum and, low, and, and minimum rates and amounts. Okay. Mr. Average is who I want to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say rates to my BOQ. And I'm going to send it to my net worksheets. I'm going to select. Firstly, I'm going to choose a resource that I'm going to allocate it to. And I've got my architectural metalwork subcontractor. And a couple of other aspects here, which are quite interesting and quite, quite nice for the subcontract adjudicator. So if I had multiple subcontract adjudication packages, which needed to go to one bill item, I could then go and create a package for each one. And every one of those rates that I'm sending to the net worksheet would go in as an added or an updated rate. So it will just add it. A nice, um, uh, an example that, that, that I generally use is um, a door frame. Now in the standard method, method of measurement, a door is, uh, is, 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 um, is um, quantified as one, uh, but it consists of your joinery, uh, let's say your, your door frame, it consists of your actual door, it consists of the ironmongery, it consists of the labor. Each one of those could be different packages in subcontract adjudication, all updating the rate on the main bill item. If I had priced previously, I can then go and actually clear what I priced because I want to use, or if I was value engineering or remodeling it to use a subcontractor's price, I would clear the existing rates that I've got there and add a subcontractor if that was the case. I'm happy with add and update. I'm going to press OK. And what it will say is rates transferred. As soon as I press OK, you'll see it'll highlight which subcontractor I've used. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to go back to my BOQ. As you see, all I do is I select and I'm going to refresh it and that'll give me my total. So there's my total for the subcontractor. Now, there's a lot of information that we've generated so far. Um, firstly, what about reporting? What about being able to view the information that I've priced? So having a host of different documents and documentation uh, available to you, of course, is very important. Um, now, if you have a look at things like different documents with the different information, you'll see that we provided a set of default documents. These could be modified, adjusted accordingly, um, and, and uh, adjusted accordingly to what you want to see. Uh, but what I've done is I've prepared a couple of, um, a couple of uh, documents. Firstly, my split, split rate pricing. So show me my bill of quantities, but show me the breakup into my labor, my plant, my, my materials. So all my different resource types that I've allocated. And that 190 consisting of 1.03, 0 0.71, and 0 0.16 to make up that total net rate. A couple of other reports or documents that we can run is, uh, um, let's say, I want to have a look at the resources that I've used for each of these bill items. So as soon as I click on that, there you see, there is my bill item and my bill description. But the way that I've built up my worksheets are now visible for me as well to see. So how did I get to those? These are all defined and driven from what I have actually included on my 
worksheets or on my net my, my worksheets and how I've priced it. If I want to go down to the simple resources that I've defined before and as indicated, so these are anything that you can buy or hire. It's a matter of changing the options that I have on that column. So I'm going to drop it down and there we go. So now it's taking me all the way down to even my diesel. So for this diesel, for this bill item that I've allocated it to, I require a total of 673 liters of diesel for that bill item. And that's the power and the information that you're getting, not only for you as an estimating to, to price this, but as well as your construction team or your project management team that is actually going to build the project. All right, so some great information there. Another part of this, which is uh, very valuable and, and uh, nice to see, is also a, an, an inverse of what you saw there. And this is um, this is resources. Uh, sorry, I wanted to show you my um, uh, the sorry, just be with me. This over here. So we are going to go into sorry about that one. The resources. This is the resource here. So here is my resource list. These are all the resources that I've used to price the project. This is my resource list with dates. So if there's ever a reason or a, a, a scenario where you need to audit what has been changed and when it's been changed, you'll see that there are some of the base rate changes and some of the changes that I've made. Now, if I go into any of these resources, and just to give you an idea, if I go into any of these resources, I'm just gonna clear everything. I'm going to go back to my resource list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the price. We've automatically got a change in price for our diesel. And I want to go and adjust it accordingly. Right. So there's my diesel. You can see that I, um, I've used a significant amount, which is 30, 31,733 liters of diesel required on this project at a rate of 1.3. Now, if I find that that rate is not, and we've got an increase, and let's say the increase of, has gone up to 1.5. As soon as I add that, you'll see that that net amount, the amount over there has adjusted accordingly. But what that has done is that has also adjusted my total cost because now we've increased it. So as soon as I press calculate, you'll see how that has been adjusted. So wherever diesel has been used, it will automatically update to incur or to, re to, to review that, that, latest, um, that, latest, uh, that latest information. When we look at things like markup, we've got a host of different markup utilities. Uh, during the tender process and the estimating process. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly allocate a markup to this. And we're going to use a trade markup. And I'm going to say that I'm going to allocate 20%. And I'm just going to do that to all my trades that I've got here uh, very quickly, just for time purposes. Now, as soon as I close that and I jump back onto my uh, document at the background, you'll see that that trade then has been updated. Now, my net amount is obviously my net cost and dry cost of the project. As soon as I press calculate, you'll see that is my price or that is what I've got for my specific gross. And gross easily derived, obviously your net plus any market. If I wanted to front load the, the, the document slightly, I can go and allocate what we refer to as individual markup. And I want to uh, yes, I want to change it. And let's say that this is 30%. Okay, yes, please confirm. And there we go. And I'm just going to revert this one as well, because this was adjusted accordingly, uh, just at a different time. And I'm just going to change it to 30% as well. Okay, so that's front loading it slightly just so we can get a little bit more cash on the initial stages or the initial part of this project. Now I'm happy with what and management is happy with this as well so you can go through a host of different reporting um, uh, as mentioned previously so firstly the resource list and what is the procurement list that i've actually created behind this so part and parcel of of uh, the system is being able to identify this so show me all my resources that i've used and priced and show me the total quantity that i require on this project all right so as you can see my labor over there that's been used at that rate, I require a total of 59,465 hours on this specific project. And if I need to identify where it is, well, I can then go with a host of different features and functionality. I can then go and say, well, show me where these are used with a full uh, description or breakdown. So the page item that it's used, the item number, the total usage for that one, and going down all the way down to even the indirect costs as well. Okay, 
So that's your procurement list created. Obviously starting off the whole project control for the, the actual project. Now, if I'm happy with the price that I have created and management is happy with that price, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna save these rates as the contractual rates. The, con the, 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 um, the client has decided that that, uh, that total amount is correct. That's the one that they want. And what we're gonna do is we're now gonna go put those, in and, uh, put those in and lock them into place. So firstly, I'm gonna copy my selling rates from my gross. Uh, I might need to unlock first and then just clear any ones that I had. And then I'm gonna copy from my gross rates, overwrite, copy zero and lock, okay? And calculate. And now you'll see that my gross amount and my selling amount is exactly the same. Now to maintain an auditable trace, I'm gonna go also say, please preserve my bid rates at any specific stage. Yes, and there we go. So if at estimation stage, there are any changes, and um, what we're gonna identify now is that if I change anything here, say anything has changed within my either my worksheet or within uh, the resource rates, I can then actually report on those changes. So if I go into my clearance strip site and I know that my laborer has actually increased in price, it's not 18 anymore, it's actually gone up to 20 as a as a as a uh, all-round figure. As you can see, oh, sorry, let me just quickly do that again. Press OK, and there you go, it has adjusted the change. Now, because I've made that over here, I store the worksheet, it will then go and update this rate, but it will keep that bid net rate exactly the same. All right, so there you can see we have updated 2.01, but the initial estimate rate was 1.93. It does not affect the selling rate or contractual rate to the client, that all remains same. And really, when we go to the post-tender side of things, that gross rate and gross amount really becomes defunct. Um, it's not really used anymore because the selling rates are, are, are locked accordingly. Now, if I needed to go through finalization process, we do have a list of uh, different things that you can allocate. So I'm going to just look at a finalization on Excel. I'm just going to run this quickly. Right, so apologies for the slight um, delay, but that's just exporting. So it's taking all the information from the worksheets, et cetera, and it's writing it into what one of these uh, one of these reports. Okay, it's open on Excel, and there we go. So if I wanted to, as a management procedure, I can then go and allocate the different markups that I wanted to allocate over here. All right. Okay, um, then. If I needed to report and create these reports to actually issue to the client or actually issue to management, we have got a host of different reports. And I'm gonna start off firstly with our, um, our trade totals display. And this is really looking at all the different aspects of the, um, of, of the, the actual job. So direct cost bill only, and I'm just gonna recalculate. So giving me all my different trades, the reinforcing, et cetera, et cetera, broken up into my net cost. And if I wanted to see what my actual markup was for each of these trades, I can then actually go and show me my selling, recalculate the trade. And there you can see that last item or the last column is really my profit that I'm looking at um, making on this, on this specific trade of work. A number of other reports that you can run. Of course, my BOQ carried forward, brought forward. So any one of these are fully customizable. And what that looks like, um, you can change your item selection, your paging and totaling. So how do I want to see my pages and my totals? Change the columns. As you can see, I've made a couple of changes here to identify and to replicate what the client has given me um, with a host of other customizations that we can do. If I press OK and I just go and print preview that, just to give you an indication of what that looks like. There you go. And finally going onto my last page, which is the total summary for the project based onto my um, required uh, resource levels. If I wanted to see other, other specific things was show me my BOQ with my worksheets. So really just having a look at how I've priced it for a management handover. There we go. So these are just a couple of the reports we can run. 
And as I scroll down, you'll see the variance. Uh, resource list I can report on as well. Okay, as you can see, that's my full resource list with the total usages and uh, allowables for this project. And lastly, So a host of different reports that you can run. The report manager is there. If I wanted to make any customizations specifically for this project, I can make them if I wanted to make them for the entire company and everyone needs to use a specific type of uh, report, I can create those types of reports um, and the, 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 um, the, uh, the estimators, quantity surveyors, et cetera, can all use those as well. Uh, and really very much coming to the end of, um, of the session, um, uh, that is really the estimating uh, to get uh, 40 years worth of development into about 50 minutes of, of, of time. Um, I, I hope I've done this justice. Um, and I hope uh, everyone uh, will give us a call to, um, to discuss it a little bit further and to really, really have a look at all the other aspects that we have on Candy itself. Um, I haven't touched on the planning and the link in the forecast, um, and that is an exceptional amount of power that you can generate um, from, from, this type of, uh, from this type of system and from Candy itself. Um, so we do have one minute left. Um, in that one minute, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us um, and for the next steps uh, to really get through and, and to have a little bit more in-depth information on, on this um, and, and uh, on, uh, on, um, on Candy itself, please scan the QR code um, accordingly. That will pop up on the next screen uh, and that will lead you to a, a, a page um, where you can then go and um, and uh, and uh, it'll take you to a, a landing page. Put in your details, and our team uh, on the on the ground will will, will contact you. Um, thank you very much for everyone's time. Um, as a, as as mentioned again, I appreciate the the time that you've taken to 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 listen to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Graham, and thank you all for joining in today. And as mentioned um, earlier and by Graham, all you gotta do is scan this QR code to fill in a form for a consultant to get in touch with you and answer any question you might have or do an in-depth demo for you and your, or your team. Uh, for those who've asked some questions during the event, we will also get back to you with answers. Most of you were asking for the recording of today's session. And yes, as we have, um, said earlier, we will be sending the, um, the recording via an email. So just keep an eye um, for that email in your inbox e and check in your junk in folder. Sometimes it get there as well, but the recording will be shared um, by an email later on today or latest tomorrow morning. And thank you everyone again. And we will be keeping the screen on for another two minutes for people to share. <laughs>